Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with an exhibition. Well, yeah, an exhibition match between Flipstep and Orphelius. Orphelius, who has been recently having this weird challenge of basically try to play against him, where he doesn't resign. Oh crap! Why did I pick this game? I wanted to show off the map, and I forgot that Orphelius had that challenge going on. Oh well, we'll have to just deal with that. I apologize. It might take a little while to end. However, this is Red Comet, which is a fairly easy map to find things on. Being a flat map radar works very well. Let's show off the map. This is the brand new and improved Red Comet, which actually doesn't look that much different. It's just... Specular map. That exists. And some changes to detail texturing. They're mostly minor changes. I don't even know if they'll show up on the stream, to be quite honest. I've... Yeah, some of them might, like the way that this rock pattern is set up, and the sand... How that's set up, and the fact that it's overall brighter than the original Red Comet. There's a few other changes, too, like this area here and this area here are actually properly flat and don't have weird diffuse texturing artifacts that are just black boxes. They look a bit rounder, a bit more natural. Anyway, that aside, to get to the game, so this map is a fairly common map. I mean, Red Comet, as a map itself, in terms of how it plays, in terms of the economy, nothing has changed. The map is identical to the way it was before, so overall, what you can see here, that's, that's what is. Anyway, yeah, plus 2.3 to everything. This map is the same as the old Red Comet in terms of metal spots. It just looks a bit nicer. So normally this map you see a lot of light vehicles, sometimes occasionally cloaky. Light vehicles, heavies, hovercrafts, that's typically what you see in this map. Usually players start out over here or over here. Over here in the west or in the east. That, like, east center, west center, that's a riskier place to start because it's harder to defend. But if you can defend it, you get the northeast or southwest for free. Whereas if you start in the northeast or southwest, it's easier to defend, but it's harder to expand at the center. Anyway, see what plays out. As we notice, Orphelius has gone for a jump out factory in the middle of this crater. This is unprecedented, at least in my experience. I have not seen a player actually do this. Ever. On the other hand, Flips have been going for a much more typical light vehicle factory, starting out with a couple of darts, going for scouting to figure out where Orphelius has gone to, Curiously going over to the northwest, just in case Orphelius has gone for cheese, because that is a thing which has happened. By Orphelius. On this map. And now, a new kind of cheese of jump bot in the middle of this crater. Unfortunately, it has been revealed. Or at least, it has been somewhat exposed. The fact that the jump bots are here is probably clue enough, I'm sure, for Flipstep to know. Oh! Oh, that's where Orphelius has set themselves up. Yeah, this is going to be kind of difficult to deal with. Not especially difficult, I don't think, excuse me, I don't think though. I mean, either by way of terraforming or aerial units. Admittedly, Jumpbot does have Archangel, which is a very powerful anti-air unit, but still, it's an option. However, the thing is killing... Oh. Oh, I see, they're pointing out there are still a few artifacts in the metal spots. Okay, that was awkward. That aside... What? That aside... Uh, weird shop talk, sorry, this distracted me because I was actually, like I said, I was helping work on the map. This, this shop talk is getting in my way. <sighs> Let's just pause, refresh. Okay, so... Or feel this, like I said, going for jump bot factory. Now the one thing about this is while it does mean that it's harder for any factory snipes to happen, at the same time, early factory snipes, while they do happen, there are oftentimes a thing that happens once you've already won the game. So not being able to snipe the factory early on, while it is a bit of a slight weakness, it's not gonna be that damaging. As long as the rest of it is damaged. I mean the thing is Orphelia still has to defend everything else. They have to defend the metal extractors, they have to defend their power plants. Their factory is a bit further away from all of these, so if Flipstep takes advantage of this and just attacks around, harasses around, doesn't worry about taking this, and expands themselves, it should be fine. They shouldn't have much of a problem. By the time they have the units to deal with this, by the time they either have air units or spiders or jumpies of their own, they're going to have enough metal. It's not going to be a problem. That would be end the game by killing the factory situation. But yes, Orphelius' strategy does force that, so a bit of a trade-off. Anyway, Orphelius... Continue to build up more Freakers and Puppies. They do have one Pyro. Yeah, just one. 
and flips up doing exactly what I suggested, going around slaughtering metal extractors because that is what you do in this game. You go around and harass stuff, and at this point, Flipstep has twice the economy of Orphelius. I mean, Orphelius is barely expanding. They have some freakers going around, but the one in the north was taken out early on. The ones to the south are just desperately trying to defend. I mean, Orphelius has hardly any defenses around here. The factory is quite far away from anything else, so it's hard to get units in. It's hard to get the reinforcements in. And Orphelius is... They're defending okay. They're able to get rid of some of this stuff. But Flipstep, like I said, they have twice the economy. They're going to have a massive production advantage. They just need to get a caretaker. That's all. Or, you know, use this mason. Build with a mason or get a caretaker. One of the two. I mean, help out construction with a mason. And I... Did Flipstep just get their commander stuck here? I don't think so, but it's hard to tell. Anyway. Flipstep... They have quite the military advantage at this point. I mean, they have enough to easily comp snipe. And if they comp snipe, Orphelius uses, loses half of their economy. That is a huge loss. I mean, that should go without saying. Half of your economy. Half of anything is usually a fairly large loss of a thing. In fact, maybe more than half. Or maybe slightly less than half. Regardless, half of a thing is quite a lot of it. It's not quite most of it, but it's a lot. Anyway, Orphelius taking advantage of the reclaim they can get. Trying to play very defensive, use the reclaim just to bounce back every time. Defend, take out Scorchers, get them, use them to make more puppies. No, I think Flipstep's commander is in fact stuck. Huh. Yeah, once again, there's still a lot of room for Flipstep to expand. And there's the caretaker. But yeah, there's a lot of room for Flipstep to expand. There's not a whole lot of room for Orphelius to expand, given that they don't have a whole lot of units. I mean, Jump Bot is a really risky factory choice on this map. They don't move too quickly. I mean, they require a decent amount of micromanagement. That doesn't help, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is just they're kind of slow. Same problem with Cloakie. The only upside is the factory can be put in a place where it's very difficult, but not impossible to get to. And Flips... No, their commander was not stuck. Flipstep, they are fine. But like I said, they're expanding forward, and they have... They continue to have twice the economy of Orphelius. And though Comp Snipe doesn't seem likely... The Scorcher is just trying to make sure that Flipstep isn't, sorry, Orphelius isn't doing anything untoward. You know, making sure Orphelius has to respect that, but at the same time, Orphelius not really doing so. I mean, they're losing puppies left and right, so they might in future, but at this point, they are being very bold. And they lost a lot of puppies for it. They lost the vast majority of their puppies, at least 400 metal worth of puppies, most of that being reclaimed. A lot of that could have gone into either other units or more stuff in general, more power plants. More power plants being a big one, because they actually need that to spend more money. And at this point, 43 days... I mean, Orphelius, I don't know what they were planning on doing here. I think this was just part of the whole, I'm going to be a bit of a jerk and force you to kill everything I have while playing hyper-defensive. I mean, to be fair, it's not like you can't actually go take in a defensive playstyle and then reverse with reclaim. It's a bit of a boring thing to do, but it's theoretically doable. You just don't really see it very often. I mean, you're essentially trying to kill off units as they come in, use the reclaim to power your economy faster than your opponent, and then push back very hard. It's something that, to an extent, Heavy Tank tries to do, and I suppose you could say that... Spider? No, Spider doesn't really do that. Spider's too offensive to do that. I don't really know what other factory does that. Even Heavy Tank doesn't do that that much. Heavy Tank sort of does that. Probably more than most. But really, this isn't a typical strategy, and Orphelius is getting their getting their economy completely wiped out, getting destroyed left, right, and center. There's nothing that they're actually doing that's doing them any good. Just more puppies coming out, getting destroyed for free, effectively. Not able to reclaim too much. I really don't understand what the motivation here is. Also, the shadows are probably a little bit too dark. Now it occurs to me. Just just slightly lighter. You know, just a tad brighter. Like maybe add like 15, 10 or 15 to each color channel on the ambient. Actually, 10 at most. Like add maybe even less. Maybe like 5 to 10 on each color channel, and that'll probably do the trick on the ambient color channel. Regardless, Orphelius, they are kind of hooped. Flipstep has been building progressively forward 
they have a massive economic advantage. Orphelius doesn't have a whole lot of reclaim to work with. Mostly their reclaim's gone into puppies, and they haven't actually built a whole lot. Flipstep has been taking advantage of the fact that Orphelius has been playing defensive to expand. They've been countering properly, and Orphelius did not have the units to really harass that out, to force that... I mean, this isn't even that naked of an expansion, but it's naked enough that if Orphelius was playing seriously, aggressively, Flipstep would have taken a lot of damage. And this game might have turned around. As it stands, though, Orphelius is about to lose their commander. With that, a quarter of their... No, a third of their economy. Or half of their economy, because the Metal Extractor died in the process. And that's pretty much it. At this point, Flipstip is essentially... I don't even need, don't even need to go through... I know Orphelius is going to be a jerk about it and force Flipstip to kill everything. Oh, and hey, how about that? Vehicles can actually get in here. Just to point out, but for the sake of doing it, Missile Silo with the Inferno, because why not? Anyway, that was Orphelius being a bit of a jerk in an updated version of Red Comet. I mean, it's different, certainly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, even though it was a little bit lopsided. Seriously, I don't know what Orphelius was trying to do there. I think they were just trying to play defensively, just out of trying to create annoyance more than anything else. I really didn't quite understand the motivation there. Regardless, we're going to have another match. It's going to be much better. It's going to be Drone versus Aquanim on Quicksilver. Should be a much better match. Should be a much more serious match. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.